Hello viewers, today I will give you some of the tips regarding how you can write data in a qualitative way. You can narrate qualitative data like a story. You can also use the voices of the participants or we can also say those quotations. You can also position yourself or a researcher in your study or while writing qualitative data. You also need to think about the descriptions you can add while writing qualitative data. What are those descriptions? A description is rich if it provides abundant interconnected details. For example, you can also add culture complexity. That means the culture of a research site. Wherever you are doing your research, add the culture of that research site in qualitative data. You can also make it thick when you connect with culture theories and the scientific knowledge. It is suggested by researchers or by qualitative researchers that make your descriptions thick by connecting your findings with the cultural theories already existed in the literature and some of the scientific knowledge already produced in qualitative research. Then you can also write about the setting of the site, about the people who are your participants or who are related to your participants. You can also write about the event happening in the situation or which are related to your research topic. Now I'm going to tell you where you can place those thick descriptions of qualitative data in your thesis or in your qualitative write-up. You can place it anywhere where it is very significant to be placed, especially while describing setting. It is more important to place such thick descriptions in findings section. Here are some of the examples how you can provide thick descriptions to your qualitative data. For example, I'm telling you what kind of thick descriptions you can add to your qualitative data. The first one is physical description of the setting. Any physical activity happening in your setting, do write about that. Then, emotional description of faces of individual or the participants of your study. How they are feeling, how they are talking, what are the non-verbal expressions of your participants, do add those as well. Then, you can also mention some of the artistic descriptions. For example, if there is a music, there are colors in your settings. So do write about those artistic descriptions relevant to your topic or your research. You can also add taste descriptions. If you are doing such kind of topic which is related to health behavior or something related to nutrition and the participants are involved in eating something, so you can also add some of the taste descriptions. For example, was the food sweet? How does it smell? Uh, how the participants felt when they touch it, how the music sounds when they heard about the music. You can also add these type of descriptions in your qualitative data. Next, you can also add activity description. For example, you can also write if the employees are having a meeting with their head and that is a situation happening in your research data. So do write what is the physical activity happening while you were collecting the data. You can also add any kind of uh, moment happening at that time in that country from where you are collecting the data. For example, Iran moment or any moment, any political moment in the country at that time, like at present we all are suffering from corona crisis so you can also write when you were collecting the data so this kind of political or health related crisis were happening in the country so you relate uh, with some of the broader things happening in your data then also describe your data from broader to narrower such as researcher talks about region of the country where, from where you were collecting the data the campus the building and the classroom. So it is suggested by qualitative authors that do write all the broader descriptions as well as the narrower descriptions in your qualitative data to make that more interesting. It is also suggested that do add some of the descriptions that educate your readers. For example, if you are studying cancer or oncology related study, then you can also educate your user by telling them that cancer infected patients in South Asia, the number about those patients, what is the condition of those patients, how they are affected from that disease. So some kind of information just to educate your user. So this all depends upon the relevancy of your data and the topic you are studying on. 
Here I am showing you one of the a picture from Cresswell's book in which you can see that all my arrows which I have highlighted in the red color that how these arrows show the settings of the research site then they are also telling you what is the activities going on in that setting and another arrow would show you that how or what is the physical activity has been going on in that scenario. So uh, this is one of the good example of providing thick descriptions and qualitative data. You can also do right as per relevancy to your research topic. Then it is also suggested by qualitative researchers that do write coherently. So what does this mean? Writing is seamless or in a flow. That means to add relationship between the data or connectivity between the words. Coherence is the ordering of words into sentences sentences into paragraph and so on to develop logical sequence. That means when the reader is reading your paragraph, there should be a logical sequence is that there should not be jumps in your writing or in your qualitative data. It is also suggested to connect paragraph. For example, the first line of the paragraph and the second line of the paragraph should also be connected to develop such a logical sequence. How you can do that? You can do this type of connection or add coherence by using some of the transitional phrases such as therefore, however, hence, moreover, additionally, on the contrary, in spite of this and so forth. There are so many academic writing banks available on internet. You can use those banks to write coherently your qualitative data. This is another example of coherence. You could see that uh, these three paragraphs are related to some of the story of students. So how the authors related one word or one line to the another line. To talk about the students, sometimes they use the word they, then sometimes they use the words as it is students, then sometimes those. So this shows the interconnectivity of the data. You can also write whatever the topic of your research is by using such words or some transitional phrases to connect your data from one paragraph to another paragraph. This example I showed you that you need to know or you just need to brainstorm yourself that what is needed to be improved here. So you could see there are only two transitional words used by the writer, which I have already highlighted in red circles, while or therefore. Here is the need to add more transitional phrases to connect one line with another line. You can also add coherence by using similes. For example, you want to make comparison between two things. So which words you can use? You can use however, you can use in contrast, to conflict and so many words and vocabulary is available. If you wanted to give examples in your qualitative write-up, you can use words such as, for example, as, like. So these kind of words you can use to connect the data. To write your qualitative data by using participants, voices or quotations. Good way of writing is to present with quotations to add evidence. Quotations or participants' voices are also important because we can add evidence that actually this is not my own thinking, this is actually a thinking of a participant. So do add as many quotations as you can as evidence of your qualitative data. It is suggested that quotations are not easy to use. So use or choose those quotations which are short medium and long if the need is there. Introduce quotations into your qualitative narrative to write about those quotations and then add the evidence. More effective is to use short phrases. It is also 
suggested that you use the short phrases or the short quotations to make it more understandable. After doing that kind of uh, write-up in qualitative data, you also need to check some of the validity of your data. In qualitative research, validity means good underlying measures are gathered accurately and can be generalizable to the settings and the context. In qualitative research, the validity checks could be in three forms. Credibility, transferability, dependability. Now I am discussing one by one all these three concepts. Number one is reliability. So what is reliability in qualitative research? Here reliability means similar findings happen in similar settings. What is validity in qualitative research? This is credibility. That means collect data from multiple sources. As you all know that in qualitative research, we believe looking at the reality from multiple perspectives. So it is suggested by the authors to collect maximum data as much as you can. Then generalizability, which is in qualitative research called transferability. This means you can also transfer your findings, not generalizability, but you can transfer your findings only into similar context. How we can add dependability in qualitative data? By member checking. When researcher takes back to the participant their themes or the entire findings, this is called member checking. It should be broader summary of data. Take feedback from your participants that whatever your write-up is, is what they said to the researcher or is there any revision need to be take place if they give you the feedback that you need to change something so revise accordingly so this is important in your qualitative write-up to go back to the participants and ask them to confirm the findings or the summary of the data you have presented to them you can also add rigor to your qualitative data by prolonged engagement in the field. It is suggested that researcher or a qualitative researcher need to spend more time in the field. Longer time provides opportunity to check themes and explanations. So if a researcher spends long time in the field or the setting, then he or she may be able to add more rigor to your qualitative data. If you have any kind of comments or questions, please do write in comment box. I will see you soon.